Hello ladies and gentlemen, Many Ninjas here. As part of a direct response to uh, kind of a reply to an earlier video by Z Vitor, one of the developers for this particular fan game, I'm actually taking a second look at Marvel First Alliance 2 here. Uh, in this case, my first look being a particular interest at some updates and general bug fixes to certain characters, including Susan Storm here. Now, that little small little flight mode I should mention was actually in the original version I did review, I just didn't get around to using it much. But the big difference, and I do mean big in this case, is while it doesn't look like much with those little invisible blocks, Susan Storm has much more range in her basic attacks now than she had in the earlier builds. It's basically a difference of night and day in terms of how much easier it is to attack with her now and just generally work in a more effective manner. Otherwise, her... It feels like it, she even does a bit more damage, although it may be just due to the fact that it's much easier to attack with her now in general. But generally, I'm able to actually complete combos properly. Her running attack, which is the invisible wall, I had issues with that in the previous build. Namely, attacking through the wall with Susan was not always possible, as at least I found. Or at least inconsistent. But now you can actually punch through the wall pretty easily. Uh, in this case, the leadership summon, which is the helper, is Herbie. Which is a nice little callback to not only the comics, but the older TV serial that they had for a while. Although, uh, mind you, Herbie isn't exactly the most useful helper because his laser attack is very slow to come out. And he rarely use, seems to use it. Anyway, moving on, we have uh, another addition to the cast, or really an addition on top of the movement. Uh, I believe Iceman is new to the title, or at least I didn't get the chance to properly review him the last time. And as the appearance might suggest, his uh, sprites here are based off resized versions of his Children of the Atom sprite set. Generally, they seem to be pretty well resized there, and after getting a chance to play with him, his uh, kind of command attack, circle forward and then attack, is his ice beam there, which will literally freeze enemies in place. He has a limited flight mode with his ice slide, so, which, uh, as a side note, a little thing which I'm not sure if it was a bug or not, if you do the ice slide motion while in midair again, it stops him dead in the air, and he just kind of hangs there until the move naturally ends. Arctic attack is his special attack, and generally between the ice beam to slow things down, his running attack, which is kind of the little ice pillar thing, and his uh, air dash, he's actually a very competent character to use. The only thing that might count as a downside is he doesn't do a ton of damage, but with all the mobility he has, it's still a really good pick. Now in this case, I'm not exactly showing off a character, but what I believe is a new helper in Blade. I wish I could say more about him, but uh, it's unfortunate the stage he's been included on because you can barely see him. In my initial playthrough of this stage, I actually picked Darkhawk, who I believe is a new character himself there. And uh, it was admittedly a bit hard to see Darkhawk, and if it wasn't for his katana, you really can't see Blade. And it becomes worse as you actually go further in this stage. Slight oversight, maybe. As for the rest of the video, Pardon me, there had something in my throat. Uh, I'm gonna be looking at a few things which I didn't get a chance to really point out the last time around. Uh, in this case, as you can kind of notice, Shocker is based heavily on Saget. He's basically uh, a sprite swap of Saget, just kind of redrawn over his general animations. I don't think Shocker or was ever anywhere as big as Saget, but that's just me now. Green Goblin in this case, typo in name at all is actually a replacement as for Sentry in that stage from earlier builds. And there are a handful of characters which I have some immediate footage of, which is handy, that I learned after messing around through it, happen to have really abusable alternate air attacks. Which, uh, at this point, I'm just starting to discover that in Psylocke's case, her uh, bounce kick not only knocks an enemy slightly up in the air, but can basically cancel into itself with proper timing. What this means 
if you got really good timing and a good lineup, you can either bounce off a bunch of enemies to keep in the air for quite a bit of time, or if you're really lucky, you can actually juggle the same enemy upward, doing like five, six different hits on them before they hit the ground and before you land. And if you do it really well and just have proper kind of enemy condition, you can just stay in the air for a while. The only other character which I found so far which has anything nearly at abusable would be Black Cat. However, rather than being able to send things flying upward in her case, Black Cat simply does her best rendition of a Chung Li foot stomp and just continues to bounce off the enemies while they stay stationary on the ground. In this case, I'm using actually a bit of the wall to help line things up while I just keep bouncing off that generic guard and these Dobermans, as well as Sandman once he pops on the scene. But you don't really need a wall in order to actually get the full effect out of it. It just kind of helps line things up, especially if you have nothing else to bounce off. What makes uh, Psylocke and Felicia here really useful is when you have enemies that are either oversized and have hyper armor such as Sentinels that do pop up in an earlier stage and certain similar enemies that do pop up later, otherwise known as the Nazi bots, just to spoil that. You can effectively just kind of stomp on them away and stay out of their attack range for the most part since they don't naturally have attacks that attack that aim upward for the most part. Although actually correction, Nazi bots do have that but they don't use it as often. But for things like the oversized Sentinels, they don't have them at all. And generally these kind of attacks keep you out of attacks range for most of the time, making it a bit easier. There are a few things which I still wish would get adjusted though, like all the flying sections that are included in this game. Honestly, they tend to still be the weakest part of the presentation as a whole, uh, especially the very last one in the story mode here which I'm demonstrating for the last stage. It's not so much that Magneto's having a hard time getting rid of them, as much as the asteroids have so much health in them that you can't actually break them. I haven't been able to find a character yet that's been able to actually break any of these damn things, so any projectiles that you shoot are basically to just hopefully nudge something just far enough out of the way that you can pass through with your own hitbox. In Magneto's case, it's actually made worse because of how his shots tend to arc especially when you have it far enough distance. It looks like it should hit, but it's missing, as you can notice in some cases. And those asteroids do quite a bit of damage. Not even when you get a bit of help coming into the second half of this particular asteroid zone, when you have a special appearance by one second, he should be popping him in there. Ah, Silver Surfer. Does it do you any good because his shots also can't destroy it, and he spends most of his time getting hit. And in some cases, making things worse when his shots slow down things in just such a way that makes it impossible to dodge, without at least taking a hit or two, which does a lot of damage. Alright. Having gotten a chance to do another complete story playthrough on this particular update, I can say there have definitely been a number of improvements overall throughout the engine and through a bunch of the characters. For one, Invisible Woman uh, is probably the most notable in this particular video, but there have been improvement and little bug fixes for a bunch of the other casts up to this point. Which is nice to see that they're going back in order to adjust a few things to make everyone a little more playable, and balance the field out for certain characters that had a really hard time before. Two, you're still seeing new characters popping in the title. Darkhawk was not there before, Iceman also brand new. Both I'd say fairly nicely handled, so rather nice additions to the title. Three, there are indeed still story elements that have been added in there. The first build of the game did not have anything involving Thanos and actually ended right after uh, defeating the Red Skull, so this entire thing is brand new to the tale that you're seeing here, or at least as of the last update. Lastly, I'd say the overall difficulty of the game has been managed a bit more. I'm not sure if it's because of enemies having their health changed to being maybe a little more reasonable in some cases. Or the fact that there are more health pickups that were very sparse before, or pickups in general. But it's a bit easier to get by them this time around, and it actually does feel a bit more fair. So that's a nice little pleasant surprise there. 
all in all, you can tell the people who have been developing this project and working behind the scenes definitely are fans of the comic book series, definitely love Marvel franchises, and it shows. It's generally really nice work. There might be a few other things which I'd like to see change, but considering how the updates have been going on this thing, I trust that they, you might see those changes a little sooner rather than later. And generally that it feels like they will get back and will eventually get around to doing some additional bug fixes like uh, maybe uh, you probably want to remove some of the cheapness with uh, Psylocke and Black Cat for instance. Uh, some characters which are a little more on the normal end like your Electras and your Punishers do feel a bit weak right now in the current build. But who knows maybe they have something that they might want to look at and may consider kind of giving them some buffs in the future. But overall, everyone still feels generally playable for most of the cast. So all in all, I could probably safely recommend this build. Thanks for watching everyone, catch you later.